Hello, this is Dr. Lorenzo, Longevity Health Institute. Listen, let's talk about something that is not being addressed and discussed enough here in America, and that is what is going on in our world with early cardiovascular deaths and just overall death rates, um, diagnoses, earlier diagnoses, and cardiac events, and why we're seeing a three-fold increase in death and mortality in all age groups matched since pre-COVID to post-COVID. Um, so uh, post-pandemic, if you will, if that's where we're considering where we're at. Why would this be happening? So, um, you know, let, let's talk and discuss this and let me give you my thoughts, my theories, and though what we know clinically, subjectively, and objectively what's kind of going on and what I see here in the practice. But yes, it's well reported since pre-pandemic times, um, death rates, age mats are up threefold. Okay, in fact, actually in a UK study, age groups 18 to 35 had an 84% increase in mortality. And the UK Parliament right now is actually investigating this. Why possibly can this be? Let's uh, bring some things to the forefront and have some open, um, you know, true epidemiology, um, health, medical, physiology discussions about possibilities, okay? Well, you've heard me talk in other videos about this, and I'm in firm belief of this because I've seen it here clinically. What has happened with viruses in the practice we see here for years, years and years, a couple decades? What have we seen? Well, viruses like Epstein-Barr, uh, like cytomegalovirus, like shingles, uh, varicella, okay, um, like herpes, um, like HPV, um, viruses actually have a profound effect in our body. They can damage tissue, they can stress and affect your immune system. And of course, so can COVID, so can COVID-19, okay? And what's interesting about this is that in studies, and you've seen this maybe in some other talks of mine, that there is science that shows that post-mortem, meaning after death, okay, they've done autopsies and they've seen in five organs, five organ systems, okay, that COVID-19 virus, the spike proteins of that virus are still alive and still having effects on tissue post-mortem. So if you think that this can't happen when you're alive and give you some long haul and give you some fatigue and give you some symptomology, um, let me tell you, um, you are, uh, I would say wrong. This is happening and, and we see it here clinically. And a couple organs are very profound. And I wanna talk of two, okay? And that is, um, and, and actually to a lesser degree, three, but two that are so important because I've even seen this happen in patients that have had minimal, minimal effects from COVID, meaning they've had a sinus or a cough or a cold or whatever, okay? Now I'm not here to talk about, and I see 90% of our patients in the practice, um, you know, in the last, you know, four to six months have nothing to do okay, with COVID and post-COVID and long haul stuff. But these small esoteric numbers have to be recognized. So even if we're talking about 5%, 10% of the population, okay, or five or 10% of my practice, these are real things and they're new things and they're not fully, fully understood and explained and brought to the people so that you can make some informed, good, conscious decisions and to seek the best healthcare. Okay, and talk to your providers, talk to your doctors, and get well, get fixed, okay? But remember, I was talking about this virus, COVID-19, affecting organ systems, okay? So we know it affects the pancreas, the brain, the adrenals, the digestive lining, okay, and the heart. <clears throat> and I'm sure it's affecting other tissues, but those are studied and well-known. Well, what is your digestive lining? It's your immunity, your digestive lining, your digestive epithelium, the mucinin covering. It is the barrier of your immune system. And when that is compromised by any reason, whether it's aging, because it is an organ that does age, you have to think of your digestive system and your digestive lining as an organ no different than your skin or bone or heart, okay? Or, or um, your lungs or aging things in your body, okay? your digestive lining ages. Now, if it's getting damaged by a virus or by the way we live and lifestyle and eat and drink and stress, etc., that compounds it. But post COVID, we've seen that lining be damaged, be compromised, which then affects your immunity, can actually cause an inflammatory reaction in your body. 
and this can lead to a storm of many events, okay? The other thing that can happen is it can affect your adrenal gland. And your adrenal gland is so powerful in the sense of it creates hormones, cortisol and DHEA, that have anti-inflammatory energy and regenerative ability. So when you have all, both of those systems being affected potentially by the COVID-19 virus, okay, of course, what's gonna happen to you? Poor immunity, inflammation, okay? And inflammation is the root and the cause of all disease, okay? You're not gonna oxygenate tissue as well, okay? And literally the loss of oxygen to tissue is the presence of disease. Literally the definition even of cancer is the absence of oxygen, okay? So the point being here is, is that these two systems have such an impactful thing in these organs and can be fixed, okay? And I think that they're causing a lot, a lot of problems in patients that either had conditions pre-COVID infection or pre-vaccine, and now it's compounded by their adrenals or by their gut and by this inflammatory and immune response, okay? And then I'm not even mentioning the most published, documented, thing that happens with COVID-19 and the vaccine, the spike protein, the messenger RA, okay, is that it affects the ACE2 receptors in your vessels that make you hypercoagulable. When you make yourself potentially hypercoagulable, whether it's intentional or non-intentional, and you have inflammation and a bad immunity, what's going to happen? Early death is what's going to happen. Bad immunity is going to happen. So our rates of diagnosis of cardiovascular events, strokes, arrhythmias, cancers, sudden cardiac death. These are what's happening and what's been shown and documented and we've seen out there in the UK and the parliament right now in the UK is doing a deep dive investigation on this. And that is very, very, very concerning because you out there need to address this. So make sure you're getting your inflammatory markers checked, addressing your adrenal function and addressing your digestive health and making sure and don't accept that you're just okay. Because when you're just okay, okay, you're on the slippery, slippery slope, excuse me, <laughs> you're on the slippery slope, okay, of decline, okay, and potentially illness and death, okay? We need to halt this and bring awareness. And I'm asking you and empowering you and telling you that you can bring this to your practitioners, your providers, or bring it to us and we will help you and we will guide you, okay? There is objective laboratory tests that we do and can do. Um, there's well documentation and science now about things that can be tracked for these effects and they can be reversed. Yes, they can be reversed, okay? We can eff effectively treat long haul stuff and reverse this, okay? But we have to address your health foundation first and a lot of that comes from your gut health and your adrenal system, okay? big things. One thing I want to mention too, because remember I said there's three organ systems that are big hitters. Five organs have been documented to be affected by the coronavirus, but the one I didn't mention, which is causing a lot of brain fog, which many of us have, which can just have when you have adrenal function issues and you have fatigue and you're not sleeping well and getting good delta sleep, etc. Okay. But your brain, okay, can create neuroinflammation. And there's literally, just this morning, when I was working out this morning, and I, I like reading when I'm on bike, if I'm doing kind of a steady state kind of workout, uh, in the New England Journal of Medicine, literally the article, Cognitive Def Deficits in Long COVID-19. Again, this is New England Journal of Medicine, just came out. In fact, the date here is November 10th, 2022. And again, I'm reading it literally right to you, okay? What's this article about? It's literally about the neuroinflammation that COVID-19 is causing. And how is it causing it is there's a chemokine, okay, that can be tested. It's a test called CCL11. And this chemokine reaction actually activates microglia. And microglia actually can cause this inflammatory response in the brain and cause your neuron myelin to demyelinate which is very, very, very scary, okay? Without saying a four-letter word, it's really scary. Why? Demyelinization, by definition, in medicine is MS. Is our, we don't want our nerves and our brain system to demyelinate. It's almost like the sheath around wires kind of fractionates and melts away. That's demyelinization. 
So brain fog should never be, by the way, just accepted. I had a new patient today with fibromyalgia that used a word named brain fog. And most of the time we can reverse this just by addressing hormonal balance, inflammation, and, and boosting nutrient pools, okay? But here in, in this case, going back to the COVID-19 in this article in New England Journal of Medicine is, is that it's well documented in this, these mice studies that literally there is neuroinflammation going on from this microglia and chemokine activation, okay? What, what does that mean in years to come? Uh, is that earlier dementia? Is that, is that you know, earlier you know, um, neurodegenerative de de deficits? Is that earlier mood disorders? Potentially, that's what I would think, okay? But you need to address it and stop it now, okay? Here's birth, here's death. We want to optimize, slow down the spectrum, okay? Extend life. What we do is grow you younger here at Longevity Health Institute. We're here to grow you younger and make you thrive, not just survive. Okay, these are real things that need to be addressed. So let me give you a few tips just here at the end, tell you about some things that optimize immunity, maybe help prevent some of this stuff and give you at least a snippet, okay, of some better health where you come, whether you come see us or not, um, think of these things because they're simple things at home that you can do. Take a good quality probiotic, get off of gluten, have a good night's sleep. Make sure you're getting seven hours plus of good sleep, deep delta sleep, okay? Um, heat and, sh and cold therapies are great for your immune system. They release heat shock proteins, okay? Like saunas, okay, and infrared saunas. And, um, you know, ice baths and, and cold showers activate cold shock proteins, okay? And have been proven to help your immune system and calm down your autonomic response, your HPA access. They calm down your adrenal system. Okay, they're great for you. Great, great, great for you. Um, eat healthy. Eat whole foods. Okay, limit alcohol. Get off of gluten. Okay, keep your weight down. Move your body. Never stop. Okay, adapt. Never ever stop. And why do I say that? Is this because we all have injuries. We all age, including myself and have had it to adapt to something, a pain, an injury, something, okay? But never stop, okay? Keep moving forward, okay? You will continue and regain traction and continue better health, okay? Um, optimize your vitamin D. Don't be afraid of taking melatonin, even if you sleep well, why? It increases delta sleep, it increases your immune system, and multiple studies show it prevents cancer, and it even can potentially treat cancer as these studies come out. So take some advice here and be well, be positive, love each other, bring the world goodness, but fix your adrenals, fix your gut, okay, and optimize your health. This is Dr. Lorenz, be well.